episode 187 of Futures Radio Show, sponsored by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world effectively manage risk. For access to free educational tools and resources for the active individual trader, please visit activetrader.cmegroup.com. Every day, traders and investors dive in to tackle the ever-changing markets to find opportunity. Futures Radio Show is your number one source for answers to the questions that all market participants want to ask. Veteran futures trader Anthony Crudelli sits down with the most influential leaders and top traders in the industry. Now, here's your host, Anthony Crudelli. Hey everyone, before we get started today, I want to thank our sponsors. CME Group, Trading Technologies, RJO Futures, and Top Step Trader. Now today I spoke with Jackie Messa, Senior Vice President of Global Policy at FIA. I had a delightful conversation with Jackie. We discussed how she got started in the industry, and she explains cross-border recognition of CCPs and their importance in the financial industry. We chatted about Chairman John Carlo and the fantastic job he is doing as Chairman of the CFTC. We talked about how European and U.S. regulators are working together so they are not in conflict with each other. Jackie explains Capital SLR and how it's an area where Dodd-Frank conflicts with itself and is hurting clearing firms. Finally, we chatted about FIA events and why traders should be attending. As usual, thank you all for listening, and please enjoy this episode. Jackie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here today. It's great to speak with you. Jackie, you're a very interesting person, and I'm really excited to speak with you here today at FIA Boca. You're the former director of the Office of International Affairs at the CFTC, and you advised the chairman on the application of cross-border rules and also carried out negotiations on the early stages of Dodd-Frank with foreign regulators. Pretty interesting stuff there, Jackie. <laughs> and those are just a few things that we're going to be discussing today. But first, I'm very interested in how you got your start in the industry. So, Jackie, tell us how it all began. Okay, I will. Um, I'm actually a lawyer, but... I came to the CFTC as an enforcement attorney many eons ago, um, worked my way through the CFTC to finally working as legal counsel for now FIA's chairman, Walt Lucan, for about a year, and was asked to do the role of head of international affairs. Um, my background is not only legal, but I also have an undergraduate and international relations. So I was always trying to find a way to get back to doing more global policies and international issues. So that was a perfect fit. At the CFTC, 13 years at the Office of International Affairs for seven. It was fascinating. Very cool. So take us to the earlier years before you got involved in that. Were you interested in financial markets? What was your drive behind getting involved in, in the financial industry? I was looking for an industry that would always be innovative, challenging, and always something new. I think when you look at issues that are um, always new and innovative and different, it really is the financial industry. I think the marrying that with my legal and international background, it sort of was the perfect fit. I actually, right out of law school, worked for the Missouri Department of Agriculture as their legal counsel for a bit through the Attorney General's office. That ag background was something the CFTC was looking for. Um, and they found useful for a bit. So coming from the Missouri Department of Agriculture into the CFTC, that was an interesting change. And what I found great and why I stayed there 13 years was the financial industry is so innovative. The products are so much beyond the agriculture industry as we know now, though an important piece. It is ever-changing and has been a great place for me to continue to grow. You know, I say this a lot on this show. It, it, what's funny about our industry is 
Nobody in this industry really likes change, but yet it's an industry that's always changing. Am I right, Jackie? So true. So true. Always changing. You never get bored. If you get a little bored, just wait it out another three months and you're going to have the next great thing come along. Uh, Absolutely. Now, Chairman Giancarlo, he's been on the show before and I listened to his opening remarks and he talked about cross-border recognition of CCPs. So this is obviously very important to the CFTC, therefore very important to all of us in in the industry. So first off, can you please explain what they are because i'm sure a lot of people are like anthony i have no idea what those even are so why are they important and also explain everybody their importance in the financial community great question when we think of regulation we think of domestic regulation so the cftc of course oversees ice and the cme and their domestic ccps and domestic exchanges and domestic participants but post-crisis what you saw is regulators sort of not trusting Uh, the other cross-border regulators and thinking it's time for us to look and see if they're regulating correctly. What has recently happened is the EU has a proposal to regulate not only their domestic CCPs, but their non-EU CCPs. So in certain circumstances, and I think the U.S. would be included, what the EU is considering is regulating directly the U.S. CCPs. Uh, The chairman is very concerned about this. I think he wants to work out a cooperative agreement with the EU, but it clearly is unsettled. Chairman Giancarlo, how great of a job is he doing? I mean, I've noticed a buzz every time I'm around that man, and, and now he's becoming even more popular on Twitter. I just think he's doing a great job. I mean, what do you think about what's been, what he's been doing so far as chairman? I think he's fantastic. He actually creates a lot of energy in the industry. I'll tell you, he spoke here at Boca last year. It was the first time we've ever seen a standing ovation for a chairman after a keynote remarks. It was a fantastic feeling that the industry has turned a corner and he's the man to lead us there. I think this year he gave um, similarly inspiring remarks, ended his keynote remarks with Churchill, a quote from Churchill. Um, Some may think that was a little bit over the top, but actually if you were sitting in the room, you would have felt inspired. So I think he is somebody who looks towards the future, what's the next thing, and is not looking back. And I think that's a great place for the CFTC chairman to be. I completely agree. He definitely doesn't look back. He does look forward, and and that's really one of the things I respect about him a lot. Now, I have a lot of European trader friends And I'm wondering if you can explain how regulators come together between U.S. and Europe so they're not in conflict with each other. Yeah. Well, people might not know this, actually, but there's international bodies that gather regulators together on a quite frequent basis. So in my old job, there's a body called IOSCO, International Organization of Security Commissions, That group met at a chairman level and at a staff level at least four times a year, but often more frequently. The experts of any particular subject would meet all the time to talk about how they're going to regulate a certain issue, a certain um, product, et cetera. And I think that's really important because you don't want each regulator around the world regulating in a different way, it makes cross-border trading, makes your friends overseas have a really difficult time complying with absolutely conflicting, perhaps duplicating laws. The ideal is for them to come together and around that table before they set their own domestic laws to understand how they should implement something so it doesn't conflict, doesn't make life really miserable for those that want to trade cross-border. Everybody wanted global markets, right? (laughs) We get global markets, and then you have these conflictions. That's right. That's right. I mean, you can't help it. There are different countries, and they have their own legislators. They have their own domestic concerns. So inevitably, there will be differences. The goal, though, is to avoid those as much as possible. I think you only want to see, you know, safe markets, of course, high standards, of course, but you don't need to see useless duplication or useless conflict conflicts, which honestly, I know your friends out there are dealing with now. Can you give them a quick reference, actually both US and European traders, where they can go to learn about some of these regulations and some things that they should be knowing of? Sure. Well, IOSCO actually has a website. It's, it's 
iosco.org. And just to understand what they're working on, I think, is worthwhile. They always have open comment periods. It's often a body people ignore. But I think people should start paying attention because it's where it all starts. And then you'll see national regulators start implementing it. If they go to that website and get a sense of what global regulators are concerned about, I just learned today that globally regulators are looking at regulation of cryptocurrencies. You know, who would have thought? So it's an important thing to stay up to date on. Yeah, thanks. Now I want to move on and talk about capital SLR issue. From what I hear, and I don't know much about this, and that's why I have you here today, it, it's massive for the industry because it's an area where Dodd-Frank is in conflict with itself. Uh, and this is hurting clearing firms, which creates less choices for traders. And, and, I, and I mention this because our traders out there, this impacts the end users. And this is important to us. So can you talk to all of our listeners out there, all of our traders about this, and what is FIA doing about it? Well, let me also say that today we took a poll from one of our audiences here at Boca about what is the most important issue impacting the industry right now. The biggest issue impacting was capital, and that's what we're talking about here. Not something in the CFTC's jurisdiction, it's actually in the bank regulator's jurisdiction, but as you said, it comes in conflict with something the CFTC is mandated to do, which is to encourage clearing. Dr. Frank was about putting more of these trades into clearing, uh, making sure that they're regulated in a way that has always worked for the futures industry. And unfortunately, when the capital rules were set, particularly the leverage ratio, they created a measure that actually makes it punitive for clearing. I think everybody would agree that more capital in the system is better for the banks. Absolutely, and FIA believes that as well. In fact, holding capital for your exposure, the clearing member's exposure to the CCP, which we know they have exposure to the CCP. They have to guarantee 100% of that client trade. They should hold capital for their exposure. Unfortunately, under the leverage ratio, they get that exposure measure wrong. And I'll just get tell you what it is very quickly. They say anything that the end user puts up in the form of margin to do their trade gets counted as leverage. We know that that margin can't be leveraged by the bank. Customers would scream. That margin yep. is the customer's margin. Everyone in the industry immediately understands that. It's segregated, there are CFTC rules around it, and those are sacred. Um, but the bank regulators seem to have missed that, and that's the problem here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Deutsche Bank is actually not clearing in the U.S. anymore because of this issue. That's right. I think what we're seeing is a shrinking of the FCMs, and that actually creates its own risk. You don't want clearing yes, concentrated in a few FCMs. We've seen five FCMs recently get out, including Deutsche Bank, get out of OTC clearing. Um, we know the market's even more concentrated when it comes to OTC clearing than futures. And in the OTC space, it really is just about a handful of players. Um, we really need to get this right before we get into a worse situation. Well, what turns it around, Jackie? I think the prudential regulators need to be listening and need to recognize that when a bank holds that initial margin, it should recognize it reduces the bank's exposure. That's exactly what it's there to do. It's there in safekeeping in some case something happens to the client. So if the bank regulators move, I think that's ideal. But there is legislation introduced in um, the House right now. It has bipartisan support, both Democrats and Republicans support it. We think this also fixes the issue. But, you know, like all things, we'd rather think the regulators take care of it themselves than have it mandated by Congress. But if it has to go that way, then we hope that that legislation also gets passed. Now, Jackie, I attend pretty much all of the FIA events, and I love them. And, and, and I love them because I learned so much here, and I believe that a lot of traders should be attending these events because they need to be engaged with what's happening in our industry. You just can't look at charts and fundamentals and then all of a sudden policy changes and then complain about it. You know, for me, that really bothers me, and, and I have been taking a much more active role in, in learning about these regulations that could impact us before they're set into policy because I think that as traders, most of us are reacting to policy that's you know been implemented. And, and that's just really the wrong way to go about it, I believe. So Jackie, talk to our audience about what FIA does at these events and why traders listening should be attending. 
Uh, thank you for that. I just think that they should be attending if they can, because it is a, it, not only is it to learn what's going on in the industry, to understand and influence the policies. There's so many people here, whether it's the CEOs of your companies or the regulators from all over the world, which I think we heard there are about 60 regulators from all over the globe here walking around the halls. It's a great opportunity to catch somebody in the halls or to listen to their panel and see where they're headed. We have a new app on the FIA website for this conference, and actually you can vote as you're sitting in the audience on certain panels. What do you think are the biggest issues? What do you want to see regulators address? What do you think? Where do you think the industry should go? And I think that is a fantastic way to influence where this industry is headed. Traders should be here to feel the mood and to understand what's coming down the pipes. I so agree. And traders out there, hopefully you're listening to this and we'll be attending the next FIA event. You can guarantee I'll be there. Now, Jackie, the tough questions are just around the corner with rapid fire. The easy ones are done. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, uh, so if you're ready for rapid fire, we'll, we'll jump into those. I'm ready. All right, all right, everyone. Our rapid fire segment is sponsored by Trading Technologies. Access the global markets from virtually anywhere with TT. They are the world's fastest commercially available futures trading platform. And now you can trade cryptocurrency spot and derivative markets side by side for the first time. For more information, visit tradingtechnologies.com. Jackie, first question, who has influenced your life the most and why? Okay, well, I have to say my father, actually. He's always pushed me to uh, go beyond where I think I can go and take risks. And I think um, I have, have done that uh, consistently and been pleased with the outcomes and not to give up. What was one of the hardest things that you've had to overcome in the financial industry? Well, I have to look back to my start, and that was actually at the CFTC. Um, I was a young lawyer, and I had just moved from Missouri to Washington, D.C. to start at the CFTC. Uh, looking um, at m my resume and background compared to others, um, I went to University of Missouri, I'm very proud Mizzou grad, and was working with other attorneys who were um, Ivy Leaguers and mainly from the East Coast. And I think there was an internal bias against me um, about what I could do. But what I quickly learned is that this industry is about understanding the people in it, understanding what's important to them, and although uh, understanding the law was extremely important for my first job, um, it was also really important to understand human nature in this industry. What's the number one resource you spend your time on? Well, I actually might not love to say it, but it's European rules. I'm con they're constantly coming out in rapid fire and probably daily having to read them and understand them. What's your favorite book about trading or the markets? Not exactly about trading or the markets, but it's Walter Isaacson's book about Leonardo da Vinci. He just spoke at Boca uh, during our lunch, and I was reminded at how influential that book is for my life. What's your favorite movie or TV show about trading or the markets? Hmm. Trading places. What's the best piece of advice that you've received about trading or the markets? I think the best advice I've, I've received about trading um, or the markets is understand the motivation um, behind what people are doing and why. Um, in my job as director of uh, international affairs and now in my current job, uh, there's a lot of negotiation uh, that you have to do, and I think the key is to always look behind the motivation. Why is somebody wanting something? Um, it helps you understand the motivation. It helps you get to the, to the right answer and the right agreement. Now, if you can give a piece of advice to the new people interested in getting involved in the financial industry, what would it be? Understand your surroundings. I think it's key to understand the products that you might be dealing with, to understand the exchanges you might be trading on and to understand even the CCP connected with that um, platform. So you may be asked to do something small or narrow. Maybe it's research, maybe it's trading, maybe it's something bigger, but understand how all the pieces work together. You don't have to know it backwards and forwards, but have a larger view of this. Last question for today. If you weren't involved with the markets, you'd be doing what? 
Oh, boy. I'd be on a trip around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff today, Jackie. Where can people find you on Twitter? And give us a website. Okay. F- at FIA Connect and hashtag FIA Boca. And what is the website? It is www.fia.org. Everyone, I highly recommend you follow FIA on Twitter and also check out their website. A fantastic resource for all that's going on in our industry outside of the charts and the fundamentals. Jackie, thank you again so much for coming on Futures Radio Show today. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you have any questions or comments for myself or my guests, please visit futuresradioshow.com and sign up to be a premium member for free. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes.